Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Weapons Inc. Weapons Inc. is for two or more players, takes about 45 minutes to an hour to play, and is roughly ages, I would say, 12 and up. In the game Weapons Inc., you're going to be a weapons dealer, you're going to be trying to buy weapons, um, and you're going to do that in order to stock your shelves, you need to spend certain amounts of energy, you'll have gold as well as two different types of currency. On your turn, you're going to be selling those weapons to gain gold, using energy to do so, you'll also be able to play upgrade cards and worker cards and other types of cards like that that are going to either stay on your field permanently which will help you in your weapons dealing endeavors or you can mess over your opponent's stuff so you can stop their workers or get rid of their weapons as well as the fact that as you can increase your weapon load you have commons and uncommons and like uh, rares and very rares and even epics you'll need certain requirements to meet them in order to get the better ones so if you want to get an epic for instance you're gonna have to have a very rare rare and an uncommon but for a rare and an uncommon you can simply put them down and then a very rare you need to have at least the rare and the uncommon these are going to give you better sell prices for the weapons you're going to be able to sell on your turn your turn is going to consist of spending as much gold as you want until you're going to spend energy and at which point you're going to end your turn and everybody else is going to have a turn and when say so spend energy that'll end their turn until you run out of energy or you choose to pass you have 20 energy total and you can use energy to buy weapons or sell weapons to other people you can use it to play other cards and uh, it has a mix and mash type, type of thing going on after everybody is either passed or run out of energy, the round is going to end, or the day, and then you move on to the next day, and there's going to be location cards, there's going to be legendary cards you can pick up and purchase throughout the game, as well as um, events that are going to pop up randomly. These events can change the way the game is played, they can give you bonus cards, bonus cards in your hand, a uh, larger hand size, they can remove certain things or add certain things to the game, and of course you have your main deck of cards, you're starting with six cards and you'll be playing them. Anyway, to discuss it more, we're going to move into the next section, and I'm going to talk, show you basically what we did. Uh, on the uh, we basically played on Tabletopia. So instead of showing the game down below, which is what I normally do, I'm gonna kind of just give you a little glimpse of how the game is gonna kind of look and what it's gonna kind of uh, be represented by on tabletop. So let's move over here really quick. So first of all, it's gonna be the contents and setup. What does it mean in the game? Well, first of all, there's going to be four decks of cards. You're gonna get the main deck, you're gonna get the location deck, the event deck, and the legendary deck. The three um, non-main decks are gonna basically be set aside, and you'll be pulling one legendary card out to start with, one location card, which is mainly gonna be the location for the entire game, and there's a ton of them. However, that can change through the events and whatnot. You're also gonna have your event cards uh, set up aside, and we'll be flipping those over at the end of every day phase, and those can either be permanent or they'll happen instantaneously, depending on what they are. Every player is going to get six cards in their hand, 20 energy to start, and 100 gold. And then they're going to start with the person who woke up the earliest during the day, which is because the earliest to rise is the earliest one that gets to sell the weapons, right? And players' turns are going to go accordingly. Make sure that you have your uh, different devices. I'm not exactly sure how they do it in the campaign as far as their... I had a little calculator, and then I had a little... Um, good tapping device that showed my energy and whatnot. And that, that's mainly what you're gonna have. You have on the right hand side is where you like to put your weapons, on the left hand side is where you wanna put your workers as well as your upgraded cards. And sometimes you're gonna be playing instance where you should be throwing across the field to your opponents. That is the main aspect of setup. Let me tell you about how to play your turns. With Weapons Inc., you're going to have your six cards in hand, and you're going to be starting the turn, provided that you were the one who woke up earliest, right? And when you play cards, you can play as many cards as you want for free, uh, not for free, but you can play as many as you want, and your turn's not going to end, provided that you don't spend any energy. The moment you spend energy, your turn's going to end. So maybe a card like a worker is going to cost 40 gold. You can subtract that from your total gold count and place that in front of you. Upgrade cards will allow you to do the same thing, as well as action cards that you can play on your opponents that are going to affect them in some way, shape, or form. Generally, it's going to be in a negative capacity. There's also a couple other cards that are going to be free, which are fun. They basically let you draw a card. Play, you, you have the card, you draw, you play it, you get to draw a card, provided your opponent, and, and make your opponent give you some kind of like, oh, well, give, give your opponent a, a compliment. Or uh, make your opponent tell another opponent how uh, bad they're at the game, which I actually really worked in this game, but I'll tell you more about that during the review. Um, but uh, during your turn, you just do whatever you want. You're playing as much stuff that you want from your hand. Of course, when your hand is empty, you're not going to be able to do anything except you'll be able to sell items, provided you have them. Now, items are interesting because they're going to have a amount you can sell per day, so maybe one up to four or five. Uh, that's going to cost you two energy to just learn the plans, and then it's going to cost you a certain amount of energy uh, in order to make the said item. And uh, after you do that, depending on how how, uh, how valuable your items are, just as based on the, the locations and the events and whatever's in front of you, like a sell value, is how much you're going to be able to sell it for. And when you've used that energy for the, either that or a card, 
card you've chosen to play, your turn will end, and it's going to go around in a circle. Um, and then eventually what's going to happen is the whole round will end. Everybody's going to choose to pass or not, uh, or choose to pass or have no energy left, and then the day phases in. There's going to be seven rounds to the game, technically, and they're called seven days. It starts on Sunday, and it ends on Saturday. At the end of every day phase, you're going to get your energy back to 20. You're going to keep your gold where it is at. So if you have 100 gold, you keep it there. If you have zero, you keep it there. And then you're going to check to see if a legendary has been bought. At any point in time, you can choose to buy legendary cards on your turn. It's going to cost gold, and your turn is not going to end when you purchase them. The legendary cards can't be messed with at all. So once you have them, they're st stuck with you, and usually they're going to have some kind of permanent effect, whether it's additional cards in your hand, making your opponents lose gold at the end of the game, or oh, just a, a plethora of different things you can do. The location is going to sit there, and it can either give you weapon sell price increase, it can be hand size, everybody gets to draw a card, so on and so forth. There's a whole stack of them, and that's going to remain there until something affects it. And then finally, you're going to flip over an event. Now, of course, multiple events could be flipped over on a single turn, depending on what is in play and what events are in play. But these things are going to be either permanent effects, maybe it'll say something like, oh, um, you know, cost in your favor. Everybody gets to have plus one selling value for the rest of the game, provided this card is on the table. Uh, then you're going to be doing any bonus uh, draw effects that might be on the board, as well as any bonus things that might be affecting you in your specific area. So if you have a plus two to your draw in front of you, you get to do those extra draws. Now, you're going to have to discard down at the end of the day to your max, your, 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 oh no, sorry, you don't ever have to discard, but you never get to draw up to an increasement amount. So if you have like six cards, right, and that's your max hand size increase, basically, that means that if you have four cards, you get to draw up to six. But if you have eight, you just keep eight. You can have a huge amount of cards in your hand. You just won't be able to draw anymore unless other card effects say so until you've gotten down past that minimum hand size limit. After that, then you're going to have the next player go in order. So if I was my turn, then the person to my left is going to get to start the day and everybody's just going to continue doing that. The game is going to go until the last day. When the last event pops and all that happens, you're going to be spending your money, uh, spending stuff to get weapons, to sell weapons and all that kind of stuff to increase your uh, gold pool. And at which point you're going to tally up all the gold you have all of the uh, uh, upgrades as well as all of the workers and any a little additional bonus effects that can be equipped to your legendaries for additional gold. And then whoever has the most gold is the winner of the game, Weapons Incorporated. All right, so let me tell you what I think about it. All right, so what do I think about the game? Well, first of all, this is a take that card game, right? It's going to have a little bit of tableau management as far as where you put your weapons and whatnot. And uh, I guess a little couple caveats would be, well, I was talking about before. You can play your uh, common items, you can play uncommons um, and rare items, but if you want to play the super rare items, you have to have the rare and the uncommon, and if you want to play the uh, epic items, you need to have all three of the different types down below. So it gives you a little bit of leeway as to how you play your cards, other than supposed to having to continually stack upward. Uh, and I think that's a really good choice because you have a bunch of cards in your hand otherwise and you wouldn't be able to play them. This gives it more versatility. Uh, the take that aspect of this game is probably one of the better ones I've played in a long time. I really, really enjoy that aspect of the game. It makes it, it's really, really fun. Even just watching your opponents. It might not be the best game uh, to like watch somebody else play, but when you're in the thick of it, you're looking at everybody's hand and what they're, everybody's uh, feel to play, what they're doing, what they're selling, how you can spend your gold to put stuff onto your field, which is important because at the end of the game, that's going to be your tallied up gold points. You can use it to buy legendary items. That's kind of like your stored lock. Um, and of course, in your gold pool, which is almost completely protected, but there's a couple things that can mess with that as well. Uh, so do you want to spend gold to mess with your opponents? Or do you want to use that? To just, that's such a vital resource to uh, you know utilize what's in front of you, which will continually give you more and more gold. You can go the route of just messing with people and keeping a small amount and just having them all have less than you. Or you can go the way that I like to go, which is to increase your weapon uh, cost as well as to increase the amount of weapons you can sell because all weapons are limited and uh, of course just trying to defend yourself against attacks there's cards that let you pull from the graveyard there's cards that are going to let you uh, recycle too on your turn you could choose if you want to spend two energy if you have nothing else to do you can spend two energy uh, get rid of a card from your hand face down which can then get recycled back into the deck uh, at some point and then draw a card so that's also a nice aspect as well now uh, you cannot draw if you already have your max hand size so if you have six cards and uh, your max hand size is six cards you can't draw additional um, uh, on the end of your turn, but there's cards that will let you do that. So you can have a huge amount of cards in your hand, as many as you can possibly uh, handle, and it works fine because they're very, very simple to understand. They're very, it's like one, maybe two sentences on a card, and it works really well as well. The, the workers are going to benefit you more permanently, but they can be messed with really easily. The upgrades are going to be stuff that's going to help you progressively sell things and trade things and all that kind of stuff. And I do feel like I'm playing as a dagger, like, emporium, basically, or a weapon emporium. I feel like I'm doing this going back and forth, and that my competition does not like 
the fact that I'm selling or doing well, and so they're trying to mess with me. Uh, there's cards in here that are just kind of random, like you'll draw a card in your hand that's just like, oh, discard this card, your opponent has to compliment you and draw a new card. Now, normally that would probably be like, what's the point of that? But in this game, because of the take that like, crazy nature of it, and people can get, tensions can get really high, that kind of alleviates some of the stress. And it's kind of funny when you're like dueling out with somebody who's, you're in first and they're in second, and they're messing with you really hard, and you mess with them really right back, and then they're super mad at you and you go, I'd like a compliment, please. And they're just like, mm, but you gotta compliment them. And, I, and I, it just, I don't know why, it just fueled the fire. It was super, super fun in, in that aspect. I think most players who like take that tableau management games are gonna really enjoy this game. It's something unique and different. Uh, I, my, my editor uh, was talking to me and he basically said it was, he reminded him kind of like Cthulhu Wars, but without the miniatures and the board, you're may, you still have all that action point management and whatnot. And I can kind of see that. For me, it reminds me kind of a take that style game and it reminds me of the tableau aspect of where you have to use your energy wisely and store up as much gold as possible while spending it where it's going to benefit you and saving it where it's going to help you win the game. Overall, this game is really fun. I think uh, this is a passion project by two guys and I got to play with them on Tabletopia, so I didn't have any components to show you, but hopefully you've got to see a little bit of what's going on over on the side as far as like the components and the style of the gameplay and whatnot, and you have a good idea of that. You can check the campaign down below in the description. But overall, Weapons Inc. is exciting, it's fun. I had a blast while I was playing it. It was just cracking up every time things were being played. It's random though, so when I say, let me give you some negatives, right? Like if you don't like take that games, you don't like games that can be aggravating, friend group that doesn't like to be the tension based um it's things like sometimes it can feel like a lull because you have to pull you have to sell 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 if you have no gold right you can't really do anything other than spending energy for cards which is such a nice thing too because i can at least spend energy for certain cards instead of having to just simply sell 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 but there are certain times in the game where you just need to sell and everybody else is doing stuff and so i can see how that can kind of be like oh well i, I don't get to do much right now but that's because you chose to do a whole bunch of stuff the last turn so you decide your fate in the game but i can see how that can be a thing with certain people. Um, so hopefully I gave you a good description of what you think about the game. You can go ahead and check it under the below in the description. All right, Weapons Inc., I give it my recommendation. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, please. Like, subscribe. Have you done it? That's why I was checking out Weapons Incorporated. Currently in the description below on Kickstarter. Should be on the third. I'll be gone for Gen Con, so hopefully this comes out just in time for that. All right, guys, we'll check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. the blog post, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And our friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. Two great sites to do giveaways and other great stuff, even more than my own. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to trading and selling weapons with you next time.